One of the most important parts of our job as journalists is holding public officials accountable. To do that, we need and often ask for what's known as public information from the government. But lately, we've encountered some state agencies that don't want to provide it, or they make it very difficult for us to get. So tonight, we'll show you just how transparent Maryland government appears to be. It's like a glass window that's been taped over with black paint. It's a story that started with a simple question about the right to know what the government does behind closed doors. An inquiry prompted by our attempts to get basic information about topics like how your tax dollars are being spent. Government officials told us the information we wanted was either costly to produce or simply secret. The problem with the Public Information Act is that it's so vague. Like when we asked the State Highway Administration about a growing expense called liquidated date damages, chargebacks to private contractors who take too much time to finish the job, a request the state denied, even after we showed them this document, which revealed just one contractor could owe the state $9 million. Or when we asked the city police department for copies of so-called after-action reports, which detail police-involved shootings. Another request denied because attorneys for the police department told us the reports are in fact personnel records and thus secret. And the biggest obstacle for obtaining public information, the offices of Maryland Attorney General Doug Gansler, where many of our requests are vetted and often returned with steep price tags that total in the tens of thousands of dollars. So we asked the AG's office for a list of all public information requests received in the past two years and how much it charged to fulfill them, just to get a sense of how fair and effective the state's transparency laws are. And their answer? A $2,500 price tag just to find out. In fact, the AG's office told us the information we wanted would have to be assembled by hand. It's a stark contrast to Gansler's campaign rhetoric about transparency. Well, we that one of our ideas rollouts was on transparency and accountability in government and how to have more things on the internet, more access for people to look at what we do. We even asked him about our difficulties getting information from his agency. The, the fact of the matter is you shouldn't have to make public information requests for a lot of the material that should be public anyway. Advocates point out the state recently received a grade of D for transparency. You know, Maryland was a D minus and there were states getting A's and B's. On in fact, Common Cause Executive Director Jennifer Bell Evan Dangle says our transparency laws favor the state. And it's very easy for an agency to come back and either inflate the cost to where the average citizen can't afford it. A lack of basic openness, which State Senator Bill Ferguson says he wants to fix. So right now we're in the process of uh, gathering information to put together a comprehensive transparency law. He plans to introduce legislation during the upcoming General Assembly session in January to strengthen the state's public information law. That's the goal. We want to make Maryland a very open data state. An idea advocates say is essential to keeping our democracy healthy. There's very little access to public information. You know, it's a good thing Woodward and Bernstein didn't have to shell out of a, lot of a lot of money to find out what happened in June of 72. Well, it's a very good point. And, you know, people understand that there could be a administrative fee, but yeah. in the tens of thousands of dollars That's a big administrative is fee. excessive, to yes. say the least. Well, another analysis found that Maryland has a weak public information <laughs> law. You think? A child that has no history of violence at school.